Welcome back Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here and we are on a road trip today because we have a road trip kind of lens. We're playing with the brand new pre-production Nikkor 28 to 400 F4 to 8 and we are exploring the lovely small town of Nanton to do it. So Nikon does have a long history of making interesting super zooms. The ones that really come to mind, the DX 18 to 200 was actually a really nice, very versatile lens. They did make a 28 to 300 full frame SLR lens. It was actually very good optically. And now we have this, a 28 to 400 for mirrorless. Now this really does push the range quite far. Again, I did mention this is pre-production. There's only so much that we can test today. This lens is just getting launched, but we're gonna cover what we can cover. But I'm eager to play with something this versatile now on a mirrorless platform. Platform. So let's take a little bit of time here to talk about this lens's body design. Now, being that it has a 400 millimeter reach, which is really nice, it is gonna physically be a fairly long lens. And you can see even on a Z8, it certainly sticks out quite a bit, but it is surprisingly lightweight, only 725 grams. You know, that's less than three quarters of a plena. And I feel like a lens like this is really designed to fit not only a camera like this, but an even lighter body like the Z6 II. I mean, you can see here, this lens is not only a shower, but also a grower. You get a lot of extension there when you're shooting 400 millimeters. Now we do have a 77 mil filter thread on the front and a very interesting square shaped hood. This is an odd choice, honestly. It really kind of reminds me of a video style lens hood. One nice thing though, because the zoom ring is so large physically, with this hood reversed, I can still easily zoom the lens. I don't have to worry about, you know, having to jam my fingers up against there. Now the zoom ring on here is actually from the factory, at least brand new, quite tight. So I don't feel like it's gonna creep on me right away, but I also do have a locking switch where I can lock it at 28 millimeters. So it doesn't extend any further when I don't want it to. But otherwise we don't have a lot of controls here. Customizable control ring, which can also be manual focus, but that's it. We don't have an autofocus, manual focus selector switch. This lens does have VR built into it, but there's no VR selection switch either. And that does seem strange to me. Otherwise we do have a nice, fairly well-built, but lightweight body with some weather they're sealing and it does have dust seals there around the lens mount. So one of the things I'm really appreciating about this lens is just having such a big zoom range, 28 to 400. Most super zooms usually top out at 200 to 300 millimeters. And I have to admit this 400 millimeter is making me downright lazy. I mean, for architectural stuff like this cool building here, normally with like a 24 to 70 or something, I'm up close shooting below or I'm cropping heavily. I'm getting all that perspective. But with this, I can just isolate subjects, nice flat compression of the scene. I'm really liking that. You know, even the occasional wildlife, we saw a raven. That's Jordan's favorite bird, by we the way. Raven. Yeah, he stupid. thinks they're really stupid. But, you know, again, it's nice to have the versatility of that lens, just reach out and get those shots and then go 28 and get nice wide landscapes as well. So I'm digging it, super convenient. Now on a super zoom like this to get all that versatility and without the lens being ginormous, there is gonna be some compromise. And that is to the aperture and the light gathering capability of this lens. So as I mentioned earlier, this is an F4 at 28 millimeters, F8 at 400 millimeters. And your aperture starts to tighten up right as you start to zoom in. I mean, even at 35 millimeter, we start to lose some light by 200 millimeters we're at f8 and then of course that continues all the way to 400 so certainly on a bright sunny day outdoors i have no issues but indoors that could be a little bit more restricting now super zoom lenses like this often have complicated optical formulas so i really expected the flare characteristics on this lens to be quite poor very happily surprised actually quite amazed so wide open we're getting minimal loss of contrast and really not a lot of ghosting and then stopping down the ghosting doesn't get any worse so very impressive result from a lens i expected have terrible characteristics okay let's talk autofocus on the 28 to 400 so nikon's using a stepping motor here they're stm motors smooth definitely quiet maybe not the fastest motors here what I am noticing is if I'm at the telephoto end, as you can see here, it's a little bit slow going from near to far.
But keep in mind that usually when I'm shooting telephoto, I'm gonna be focusing at distance. And then the difference to focus at those distances is minor and the focusing motor is doing a perfectly fine job. If we go back to the wider end at 28 here, you can see the autofocus performance from near to far, actually quite smooth and snappy. So overall, I think it's gonna stand up to most situations you encounter. Did you get a biff? I didn't, I'm, what's a biff, a bird I f***ed? No, I don't f*** birds. Bird in flight, Chris. Oh! Okay, so let's talk about bouquet. We're trying to find specular highlights. You're not gonna get them off of that beautiful CF100, so instead, how about a muddy puddle next to the road? That'll work well. So let's take a look here at bouquet, first at 400 millimeters. So what I am noticing, wide open, fairly round absolutely but quite a distinct not just soap bubble effect but sort of a multi-ring effect around the outside not onion rings at all just this kind of very distinct outer ring and now let's look at 400 millimeter stop down you can see here we're actually not getting that round an effect it's a little bit polygonal still getting that double ring around the specular highlights on the outside but no onion rings or anything looking at 28 millimeter we don't get a shallow depth of field but you still get the same idea we're getting a similar look to our bouquet so when we look at that out of focus area Areas. I'm actually impressed how smooth it is. I expected with that more, uh, you know, contrasted outer ring that we get a harshness to it, but overall it's actually fairly pleasing. So nice transitions. This isn't really a lens that you're gonna do a lot of shallow depth of field stuff with unless you're doing close up. So let's talk about that next. So if you've got a lens with a very versatile focal range like this, you want to also have the versatility of good close-up capabilities, and the Nikkor 28400 doesn't disappoint. So effectively, whether at 28 millimeters or 400 millimeters, we roughly get one to three life-size reproduction. You can see here an example of where our close-up is quite similar, although of course the perspective to the background changes quite a bit. Shooting at 28 millimeters, we're very close to the subject. I mean, 20 centimeters from the actual sensor itself to the edge of the lens. In a lot of cases, we're basically almost touching the hood, but at 400 millimeters, we get plenty of working distance. And so this lens really does very nice close-ups with very versatile working distance ranges. So because this is a Nikon pre-production, first off, one of our favorite Nikon reps drove the lens down to us, so we've only been able to play with it today. That means we can't put it through our test charts. Plus again, it is pre-production. But taking a look at the shots, looking here, especially at 400 millimeter, I'm finding that sharpness looks very good. 28 millimeters, again, I'm seeing lots of detail, so I'm not worried about it at all. So my closing thoughts here on using this lens for our lovely little road trip through Nanton, Nikon's done a great job here with another super zoom. I'm impressed by how big the focal range is. Yes, it's physically long, but I'm not finding it heavy or a pain to carry. And optically, I'm actually pretty impressed with most of its characteristics. So yeah, when you look at other manufacturers making super zooms for other mounts, they tend to go with more conservative zoom ranges and brighter apertures. And one of the limitations here with the Nikon is from 200 to 400, you have that F8 aperture. You're not really gonna be using this lens for indoor sports or nighttime photography at those telephoto ranges. But if you have situations where you can crank the ISO higher, or if you're on day trips, a nice light, you wanna get wildlife out there or kids sports during the daytime, I think people will find this to be an incredibly versatile tool. Hey, you don't see a 28 to 400 very often so leave your comments below let us know what you think about nikon's new design also do check out our podcast it's on all your favorite podcasting apps just search for petapixel podcast or you can see it on the exact same youtube channel if you want to see our lovely faces thanks so much for joining us we'll see you soon with more content on petapixel